Okay, so you've probably seen those best places to work awards. I mean, they're everywhere, right? Oh, yeah, plastered all over the place. But have you ever worked at one of these supposed best places to work and thought, um, this isn't quite living up to the hype? Yeah, that disconnect between the award and the actual employee experience. Exactly. And that's what we're diving into today. We're taking a look at the employee experience mindset. It's from the Strengths Company. They're really focused on you know, using data and taking a more holistic approach to actually building better workplaces. So not just handing out those participation trophies. Right, exactly. So what makes their perspective so different? Well, one thing is they're really calling out the certification fatigue. Like they, they've found that a lot of HR professionals and even employees are just kind of over it. They're skeptical of these traditional workplace certifications. Yeah, it's like we've all seen behind the curtain now. We know those awards don't always reflect what's really going on. Exactly. And it's not just about skepticism. It's mm -hmm. almost like there's this erosion of trust. When companies are touting these awards, mm -hmm. but then they don't actually live up to them. They're not walking the walk. So how is the strengths company trying to change things? Well, they're taking a much deeper approach. They actually measure employee experience across 17 different areas. 17? 17. 17. Mm, that's a lot. It is. It's much more comprehensive. You know, think about like motivation, engagement, leadership, even things like bureaucracy. It's not just like, write your manager. Right. Way more in-depth than the usual survey. Exactly. Okay. So 17 areas, that's a lot to unpack. What kind of insights are they getting from all that data? Well, it gives them a much more holistic picture of what's really going on inside a company. And then mm -hmm. that allows them to pinpoint specific areas where you can make improvements. Okay, so they're gathering tons of data, but then what? Do they just kind of dump it all on companies and say, good luck? No, not at all. They have a whole team of experts, you know, organizational psychologists, well-being experts, data scientists. And they actually help companies interpret the data and turn it into actionable insights. So it's not just about collecting data. It's about making it meaningful. Exactly. And I'm guessing that's where their expertise in employee experience design comes in. Right. They have this really interesting framework they call Map Measure Improve. And it really focuses on intentionally designing each touch point in the employee journey. Touch point. So you mean every interaction an employee has with the company? Yeah, from the moment they apply for the job. Or maybe even when they leave someday. Potentially, yeah. So things like onboarding performance reviews, internal communications, all of that shapes their experience. Exactly. Every interaction matters. So let's break down this map measure improve framework a little bit. What does MAP actually entail? Well, mapping is all about identifying those key touch points, basically creating a visual roadmap of the employee journey. So you're trying to pinpoint those potential pain points and those moments that really shape the experience. Exactly. Okay, so you're creating this visual representation of every step an employee takes. And then what you measure, those touch points. Exactly. You collect data at each point to see how it's actually playing out in reality. So that could involve surveys, interviews, yeah. maybe even analyzing data from your HR systems. All of the above. And I'm guessing this is where those 17 areas they measure come in handy. Absolutely. It gives you a much deeper understanding of what's happening at each point in that journey. Right. It's not just surface level. Okay. So we've mapped out the journey. We've measured the experience. Now it's time to improve. But how do you even begin to tackle that? Well, that's where the improved phase comes in. You take all those insights that you've gathered from mapping and measuring, and then you use them to make those data-driven changes. So it could be something as simple as tweaking your onboarding process, or as complex as revamping your whole performance management system. Exactly. It really depends on the situation. So you're identifying problems and then using the data to find solutions. And it's an ongoing process. You're constantly gathering feedback, analyzing data, and then making adjustments. This is not a one and done kind of thing. It's about creating this culture of continuous improvement. Right. Constantly evolving. I can definitely see how this approach is way more effective than just throwing money at perks or chasing after some best workplace title. It's about truly understanding your employees' needs and then creating a workplace where they can actually thrive. So who are the people behind this whole operation? Who is the Strengths Company? Well, their leadership team has some pretty impressive credentials. They've got Sylvia Ola. She's an organizational psychologist who specializes in employee experience design. And then there's Bobby Hartsorn. She's a workplace well-being expert. And Dr. Louise Lambert heads up their happiness research. Wow, they've got all the bases covered. 
psychology, well-being, even happiness. It's a pretty potent combination. Yeah, when it comes to building a better workplace. And you know, one thing that's really interesting is their focus on integrating well-being into the employee experience. They see those two things as totally inseparable. Yeah, that makes sense. You can have all the best perks in the coolest office in the world. But if your employees are burned out and miserable, it's not going to matter. No amount of free pizza can make up for a toxic work environment. Exactly. They argue that well-being is really the foundation for a positive employee experience. You can't have one without the other. So we're moving beyond the ping pong tables and the free snacks. What does this unification of employee experience and well-being look like in practice? Well, they give some really great examples. They talk about how you could have a perfectly smooth onboarding process, but then if that new employee is immediately thrown into this culture of burnout or micromanagement, it's all for nothing. Yeah, no amount of welcome swag is going to make up for that. Right. They also emphasize how important it is to consider well-being at every single touch point. So when you're designing your performance management system, for example, you need to think about how it's going to impact employee stress levels and work-life balance. So making sure those touch points are actually positive experiences hmm. rather than just boxes to tick. Exactly. And that's where their data-driven approach comes in again. By measuring things like stress burnout and overall well-being, companies can identify which touch points are causing problems and then make adjustments. I'm starting to see how this is all connected. It's about moving beyond those superficial solutions and creating workplaces that are genuinely good for the people who work there. And that's what's so exciting about the Strengths Company's approach. It's a real shift in mindset. So what does this mean for our listener? If you're trying to build a better workplace, whether you're an HR or a manager or just someone who cares about their work environment. The key takeaway here is that creating a positive employee experience. It's not about one size fits all solutions or chasing after the latest fads. It's about taking this data-driven approach listening to your employees, and then being willing to make real changes to improve their well-being and their overall experience. And the strengths company seems to be giving companies the tools and the expertise they need to actually yeah. do that. They're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. Right, and that's what makes this deep dive so compelling. It's about creating workplaces where people feel valued and supported and genuinely happy to come to work each day. Which honestly is a much more meaningful achievement than any award could ever be. Yeah. But we've only just scratched the surface here. There's so much more to explore. So stay tuned for part two of this deep dive. We're going to delve even deeper into the strengths company's approach and how they're helping organizations ditch the badges and build truly better workplaces. Yeah, it's going to be good. I can't wait. So, you know, one of the things that really jumped out at me in all of this was their focus on continuous improvement. It's not just like you reach some perfect state and then you can just coast. Right, because the workplace is constantly evolving. And so are the needs of employees. Exactly. So how do they approach this idea of continuous improvement in a more practical way? Well, they talk a lot about this concept of touchpoint mapping. Have you heard of that? I've definitely heard the term. But to be honest, I'm not sure I fully grasp what it means in practice. Yeah, it can sound a little bit jargony, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So remember, a touchpoint is any interaction an employee has with the company. Touchpoint mapping is basically about identifying all those key interactions mm -hmm. and then visualizing them and then thinking about how can we make each one as positive and productive as possible. So you're creating this roadmap of the entire employee journey and then you're optimizing each step along the way. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. And what's really interesting is that they actually break down these touch points into seven key areas. They've got pre-employment onboarding, development engagement, well-being, leadership, and exit. Okay, seven areas. It sounds like a lot to keep track of. It can be, but breaking it down like this makes it a bit more manageable. Uh -huh. And within each area, there are all these specific touch points that companies can focus on. Okay, so give me an example. Let's say we're talking about onboarding. What kind of touch points would fall under that category? Okay, so onboarding actually starts even before the employee's first day. You've got things like the job application process, the interviews, the offer letter. Then once they actually start, you've got the welcome orientation, their initial training, and then, of course, the ongoing support and check-ins, you know, during those first few weeks and months. Right. It's like onboarding is a whole journey in itself. It's not just a one-day event. Exactly. And each interaction is a chance to make a positive impression. Like, think about the job application process, for example. Is it easy to navigate? Does it actually give candidates a clear sense of what it would be like to work at the company? I've definitely had those application experiences where I'm like, 
nope, I'm out before you even finish. Right, exactly. And those negative experiences can actually cost companies top talent. So by mapping out these touch points and really thinking about how to improve them, you can create a much more welcoming and positive experience for candidates. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's just one area. I imagine there are tons of touch points to consider across all seven. Oh, there are definitely a lot, but that's where data comes in. The Strengths Company emphasizes how important it is to measure how well each touch point is working. So this could involve things like surveys, interviews, or even looking at data from your HR systems. So you're not just guessing what's working and what's not. You're using actual evidence to make decisions. Exactly. Data-driven decision-making. I love that. And then once you have that data, you can use it to actually improve things. So maybe you find that your onboarding process is way too complicated and overwhelming, or maybe your performance reviews are causing a ton of anxiety. And then those insights would guide you as you make changes to improve the employee experience. Exactly. It's this continuous cycle of mapping, measuring, and improving. It's like a feedback loop. Exactly. And the cool thing is this can work for any organization. Right. It's not just for big corporations with fancy HR departments. So it's not just for the big players. Any company that wants to create a better workplace can benefit from this approach. Absolutely. It's all about being intentional and thoughtful about how you design each interaction an employee has with your company. And making sure those interactions are positive, productive, and meaningful for everyone involved. Exactly. I like that. And ultimately, that's what leads to a better workplace, a more engaged workforce, and of course, a more successful business. I love how they tie it back to the bottom line. It's not just about being nice. It's about creating a workplace that thrives. Right. They understand that a positive employee experience is a strategic advantage. When employees are happy and engaged, they're more productive, they're more creative, and they're much more likely to stick around. Which, of course, is good for business. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked a lot about touch point mapping and this data-driven improvement. Yeah. But what about the good old engagement survey? Are those still relevant in this new world? That's a great question. And the Strengths Company actually addresses this directly in their material. They basically say that engagement surveys have become a bit of a double-edged sword. Okay, how so? Well, on the one hand, they can be a really good way to get feedback from employees. But on the other hand, they've become so common and often so poorly designed that they can actually do more harm than good. Oh, I've definitely been there. <laughs> filling out those endless surveys and thinking, this is just going straight into a black hole. That's the problem, isn't it? Companies send out these surveys, they collect a bunch of data, and then they do absolutely nothing with it. Or even worse, they use it to punish or blame employees instead of actually trying to improve things. So what's the alternative? How can companies use surveys effectively without falling into those traps? Well, the strengths company suggests a few key things. First, they emphasize the importance of asking the right questions. It's not enough to just ask if employees are satisfied or engaged. You need to dig deeper and really get to the root of what's driving those feelings. Right. So instead of asking, are you happy? You might ask, what are some things that would make you feel more valued and appreciated at work? To exactly get specific. And it's not just about the questions themselves, but how you ask them. You want to make sure the survey is easy to understand, easy to complete. And most importantly, that it feels like it's actually going to make a difference. Because if employees don't believe their feedback matters, yeah. they're not going to bother. Exactly. It defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, that makes sense. The second thing they emphasize is the importance of action. It's not enough to just collect the data. You need to actually do something with it. So it's not just about listening, it's about responding. Exactly, and that means being transparent with employees about what you're hearing and what steps you're taking to address their concerns. Because even small changes can make a big difference, especially when employees feel like their voices are being heard. Absolutely. So it's about closing that feedback loop. Exactly, and that's ultimately what the strengths company is all about. It's not about chasing after awards or quick fixes. It's about creating a workplace culture where employees feel valued and supported and empowered to do their best work. Which is a goal worth striving for no matter what kind of organization you're a part of. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so we've covered touchpoint mapping, we've talked about engagement surveys, but there's another big piece of the puzzle we need to talk about, mm -hmm. and that's well-being. What does the strengths company have to say about that? Well, they have a whole section in their material dedicated to unifying employee experience and well-being. They see these two things as deeply interconnected. Yeah, I can see how that makes sense. But why is that connection so important? Well, it's like, you know, we've been talking a lot about data and surveys and, you know, all this stuff. Touch point mapping. 
Exactly. All super important. But it's easy to get caught up in the technical side of things. Yeah, for sure. But we can't forget about the human element here. Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's all about people. Right. The strengths company really drives that point home, this importance of human connection and well-being in the workplace. And they have a whole section, you know, on unifying employee experience and well-being. So why is that connection so important? Well, just think about it. You could have like the most amazing perks, the coolest office space, the most flexible schedule. But if you're constantly stressed out or burned out or feeling undervalued, none of that stuff really matters. Right. Because you're not going to be able to fully enjoy those perks. Yeah. If you're not feeling good mentally and emotionally. Exactly. They argue that well-being is really the foundation for a positive employee experience. It's like building a house. You need a strong foundation before you start adding all the bells and whistles. Exactly. So how do you actually build that foundation of well-being in the workplace? Well, it starts by recognizing that well-being is multifaceted. It's not just about physical health. It's also about mental, emotional, and even financial well-being. Right, because all those things are connected. You can't really separate your work life from your personal life. Totally. It's all intertwined. And it all impacts each other. So companies need to take this kind of holistic approach to well-being. It's not enough to just like offer a gym membership or a few yoga classes. Right, it has to be more than just perks. You need to create a culture that actually supports well-being in all its forms. So what would that kind of culture look like? Well, for one, it would be a culture where employees feel safe talking about their mental health without feeling judged or stigmatized. Because let's be real, mental health is just as important as physical health. Absolutely. And it affects everyone. A well-being-focused culture would also mean things like reasonable workloads, where people aren't constantly being pushed to their limits. Because burnout is a real problem, and you can't just fix it with, you know, a few extra vacation days. Exactly. It's much deeper than that. It's about preventing it in the first place. And it would also be a culture where employees feel like their work has meaning, like they're contributing to something bigger than themselves. Yeah, when you feel like your work matters, it's a lot easier to show up motivated and engaged. Exactly. And it's not just about what companies do for their employees. It's also about giving employees the tools and resources to take care of their own well-being. So things like access to mental health resources, flexible work arrangements, encouraging people to take breaks and prioritize self-care. Exactly. It's about empowering employees to take ownership of their own well-being and creating that supportive environment where they can thrive. This is all making a lot of sense. But I'm curious, how do you actually measure well-being? It seems so subjective. It can be tricky, but there are ways to do it. The Strengths Company uses a combination of surveys and interviews, and they even look at physiological data to get a more complete picture. Physiological data, like yeah. heart rate and sleep patterns. Exactly. There's actually a lot of research now on how things like stress and burnout show up in our bodies. Wow, that's fascinating. So that data can be really valuable for companies, you know, trying to understand and improve well-being. So it's not just about asking people how they're feeling. But actually looking at the data to see how their well-being is impacting their physical health. Exactly. And by combining all that data, mm -hmm. companies can start to see trends and patterns and make more informed decisions about how to support their employees. I love how data-driven this whole approach is. It takes the guesswork out of it. Yeah. It's not just based on gut feelings. It's about looking at the evidence. And that's what's so exciting about this movement towards a more holistic and data-driven approach yeah. to employee experience and well-being. It's about creating workplaces that are, you know, productive and profitable, but also genuinely good for the people who work there. Yeah, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? I think so. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, from those best workplace awards and the problems with them, to this idea of data-driven improvement and the crucial connection between employee experience and well-being. It's been a really fascinating conversation. I hope our listeners are walking away with some valuable insights. Mm -hmm. You know, insights on how to create those workplaces where people can truly thrive. If you want to learn more about the Strengths Company and their approach, definitely check out their website. Mm -hmm. And just remember, creating a positive workplace culture isn't a one-time project. It's an ongoing journey. So be patient, be persistent, and most importantly, listen to your employees and be willing to make changes based on what you hear. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time.